Hi, I'm Dr. David Hill, and today we're going to be talking about how to treat yeast infections in babies. Now, when we say yeast, we really mean an organism that is yeast, Candida albicans. That's a scientific name. And uh, Candida is one of those things that rides around on us, usually doesn't do us any harm. If you culture people's skin, you're likely to find yeast in all sorts of places. However, babies' immune systems are not very good at keeping yeast under control. Babies can also have more difficulty with hygiene than adults who can wash themselves and stay clean and dry. And both of these things can make yeast a more significant problem in babies than it is in older children and adults. When we see yeast infections in babies, the first place we see them is in the mouth. That's called thrush. And what you'll see is sort of a white plaque, a film on the tongue or the cheeks or the gums that doesn't wipe off. Now, this is distinguished from breast milk or formula stuck on the tongue. If you go after that with a washcloth or your finger, usually you'll scrape it right off. Yeast doesn't scrape off. It's adherent. Uh, so that can be a really uncomfortable condition. The treatment for that is a medication called nystatin in almost all cases. Nystatin is sort of a thick yellowish liquid. You dribble it onto the tongue with a dropper or you can use a cotton swab to mush it around inside the mouth. It works where it lands, so you want to get it on the yeast right where it is. We usually use it four times a day prior to feeds and it tends to be very effective. When nystatin fails, we can use an oral medication called fluconazole. The brand name is Diflucan, but we don't often have to go to that extreme. The second place that we see yeast as we head down the body is in the folds of the neck or the armpits. Candida, yeast, loves places that are moist. And babies often, when they have a lot of rolls of fat, their neck never really gets completely dry. Milk dribbles down in there. Drool gets down in there. And that is just a fun house for Canada to set up and get rolling. Again, Nystatin tends to be the drug of choice. You can even use it as a Nystatin powder, which will absorb some of the moisture as well as treating the yeast infection itself. Now, the third place that we see yeast infections in babies is in the diaper area. It's probably the most common cause of diaper rash. It's not the only cause of diaper rash, so never assume that the diaper rash is yeast, especially if it's not getting better. Yeast diaper rashes tend to involve the folds of the skin. Remember, we said it likes moisture, so it's where skin meets skin, in the folds. The better you can keep those areas dry, if you can do a real good drying off at diaper changes or let the baby go without the diaper for a little while, that can help some. But again, Nystatin powder, cream, or ointment is the first line of therapy in these cases as well. Now, there are some other diaper rashes to be aware of. If the rash affects the parts of the skin that touch the diaper, but not the parts of the skin that touch each other, that's probably an allergy to something in the diaper. You're going to want to change the diaper brand. Also, we're seeing lots of staph infections in the diaper area. These come with pustules that may actually drain pus, and kids with those are probably going to need an antibiotic as well as an antibiotic ointment. So remember, if the rash is confusing or not getting better or looks funny, get your baby's doctor involved in helping to treat it. Talking about how we treat yeast infections in babies, I'm Dr. David Hill.